Welcome to the Gals Guide to the Galaxy podcast, where a group of gals gather for you one cool thing around our topic of the month. Is it ancient history? Is it breaking news? Is it safe for work? Well, that's up to each gal. All we know is that... Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Welcome back. I'm Amy, and I'm joined by Bonnie, Leah, and Katie, talking about our One Cool STEM gal. Bonnie has already talked about Mamie Phipps Clark, and Katie has talked about Mary Sequel. But before we dive back in, let's get to know something random about our gal pals. And (laughs) so what I want to know is what field in STEM really floats your boat? Like, what's your favorite science? (laughs) <laughs> or engineering or- right <laughs> or technology or yeah, yeah. manufacturing <laughs> exactly i i'm a geek for any space science i love space science so i don't care if it's tang or the pen um or you know what i mean like the space pen like velcro like i am and i just i will nerd out about things that we have invented or things that we have thought of that are space related because i think my brain goes why didn't we think of that here <laughs> we had to go to another moon planet orbit to think of these things but i mean we think of these things eventually so any kind of space science i will totally geek out about (laughs) i actually have a minor in my favorite um and it's considered one of the softer sciences i suppose softer Um, sciences my (laughs) softer side mine is um psychology i've just always been interested in like what makes us do what we do why do we Mm -hmm. think what we do what other people thinking like just the study of um how our brain works is yeah so that that's my i don't think that's a softer science at all i think that's a super important science right (laughs) a foundational science thank you i almost went with my major which is political science and did a politician (laughs) for tonight but i was like didn't want to be like (laughs) that's not a stem And then I'd be like, well, I have a Bachelor of Science, so it's STEM. <laughs> right. Exactly. <Yeah. laughs> Love it. <laughs> I'm with, with Leah with, like, all the space stuff. Uh, growing up, I wanted to work in mission control. Oh. But then I was worried that, you know, if I got a math problem wrong, <laughs> someone could blow up. And I was not ready for that responsibility. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure on the math. <laughs> oh. Yeah. No, uh, when I was doing uh, work, uh, when I was reading the, the 52 Ladies of Science um, book, Headstrong. Yes, the 52 Headstrong, Headstrong Women of Science. Um, they had <laughs> uh, Dorothy, Dorothy Clawfoot is it Hodgkins? Hodgkins? Could I think be. she did. Right. Well, and a little bit with Russell and Franklin. They, they worked with uh, x ray crystallography. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I am still like, it's like such, like, I think they, they moved past that so quickly. Like, I don't think they have any of those things left. Mm. Like, I get you're shooting at rep x rays at a thing to take a picture. But they would have some kind of these little like chart or slides or something to compare it to. To figure, so I'm just like picturing someone with like a little weird, like glass, like index cards or something. <laughs> like I'm really trying to figure out like how the like, you know, they did this with pretty much like steampunk technology. I've been I've and been glass plates and my a hope and a prayer for a while. <laughs> Nice. I dig it. Amy, what's yours? Well, mine is actually, um, and my entire family of engineers and physicists, I even have a relative who does um, um, like the spectrometry and the x-rays and all that as a biophysicist. But but I actually really love biology. Mm -hmm. Um, any kind of natural science, um, animals, and also like how the human body works. Yeah. I really like 
like, you know, physical therapy and mm -hmm. like, you know, what muscles do this and what, I don't know. I'm just into all that nutrition, all the different mm -hmm. kind of weird things that your body needs and does. And I don't know. That's my thing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Love it. Perfect. <laughs> And um, that actually kind of leads into my gal. Yay! We love it when that happens. <laughs> yes, because I, I picked a, um, a biologist, a naturalist, and her name is Karina Newsom. Nice. And I am going way back in time to last year. Really? That far back? <laughs> you know, I heard 2020 doesn't exist anymore. I hear they wiped it out. <laughs> we'll, we'll, get, we'll go back to, to, to the... The dark times, the past. The dark <laughs> times. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Karina Newsom is one of the founders of Black Birders Week, nice. which is actually a movement that stemmed from um, the incident in Central Park. Yeah. Where Christian Cooper, um, he is a birder, he's also a writer, and he asked a, he's a black man, and he asked a white woman to put her dog back on a leash because that not only was scaring away the birds, but also is the rule of Central Park. I mean, it's right. posted. And um, she called the police on him and said that he was threatening her life. And Which he, he wasn't. The whole thing, um, the videotape was, of course, all over social media. And Karina Newsom was part of um, a group text <laughs> <laughs> nice. of a lot of other um, black scientists and they unofficially calls it call it black af in stem or black af in science i love it yes and this group text it started off just kind of a small group and now it's over a hundred people just kept inviting their friends nice and they share a lot of experiences on being, you know, a minority in mm -hmm. science. And after this happened, they all were sharing how this happens to them often, um, mm -hmm. especially the scientists like Karina, who work in the field. Yeah. And so they were all talking about how, you know, they'd be out at night with like binoculars looking for bats or something, and they'd get the police called on them. And <sighs> Yeah, and it, it was such a common thing. They all started talking about what can they do to sort of um, promote the fact that, you know, Black people are in nature. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. they like the, everyone likes the outdoors. It's not this exclusive thing, and especially mm -hmm. um, with bird watchers. Yeah. So, a lot, because it's sort of a group text, a lot of them are younger, um, you know, social media is where it's at for them. And Karina Newsom, all of her socials are actually, she's hood naturalist. Oh, nice. I love. Hood naturalist. And, <laughs> yeah. and so they all, they all decided to organize this over social media. So they started using hashtags on like Instagram and Twitter, um, Black in Nature and um, Black Birding Week, Black nice. Birders Week. And as more and more pictures were shared and images and stories, it just became this like joyful thing where right. these people who had maybe felt isolated before as being, you know, the only bird watcher in their group yeah. or, you know, the only black family pitching their tent at the campsite or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they, as they were sharing, it became this, this joy of like, look at all these people, you know, out enjoying themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was really, really, it was a lovely thing. And she was one of the um, very first organizers, but it has grown since then. Um, after Black Birders Week, um, lots of other Black science areas mm -hmm. um, started claiming their um, space on social media. So there's um, Good. You know, Black Astrophysicist Week and Black Neuroscientist Week and these yes. hashtags. And they're all still out there. You can search them. People still post under them. Um, and it's it's just thriving. And a nice. lot of it is just really, really funny. It's, it's, I mean, and it is, it's joyful. And it's so helpful to a lot of kids and a lot of other um, a lot of other graduate students too, 
Um, they were tweeting. One girl said, I was excited to go to grad school, but I was also nervous. The mm. lack of diversity in STEM led me to question my capabilities and my place in biology. Oh. Hashtag Black Birders Week has truly reinvigorated and reassured me that I am not alone. I can do this and I belong here. That's so, beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's really lovely. Um, but to talk a little bit more about Karina, um, she got interested in birding and, um, and biology because one of her high school teachers, she said he was strangely excited about birds. <laughs> he seemed like he was on Red Bull whenever he was talking about them. <laughs> And on the first day of the lab portion, he showed us the 10 most common birds in our area. And one of the birds that he showed was a blue jay. And Karina thought to herself, that's a blue jay. <laughs> she'd never, she'd heard of them, but she'd never seen one. She didn't know what they were. And so the next time she was walking outside, she said she saw them everywhere. And from that moment on, she said she realized that there is so much out there that I hadn't seen because I didn't know it was there and I didn't know to go out for look for to look for them and that was her springboard into birding and to her eventual degree where now um, she is studying sparrows in Georgia and that, oh, wow. her, yeah that is her um, sort of her speciality um, and she studies on the coast and She's, uh, her field site is in Brunswick, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And when she was assigned there and she got there, um, she was, you know, looking around, they have a plantation museum. Mm -hmm. And she said it was kind of, it wasn't the, it wasn't like an educational one. It was celebrating and reveling in the good old days. Mm. She said there were Confederate flags everywhere. And she said, she calls it a socially unsettling place to be. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so she's already in Georgia and, you know, out in the field. And she, then this is a direct quote from um, an interview. She was interviewed by New Yorker magazine. Um, and it said, what made it even more horrible recently is that Ahmad Arbery was killed down the street from my field site. Oh, wow. I pass that neighborhood every time I go to the field. Before I was always thinking, oh, that's a pleasant little neighborhood because of all the Spanish moss and the live oaks. And it's really pretty as far as wildlife is concerned too. And then that happened. And now every time I drive down there, it's a very disorienting feeling because mm -hmm. I think about how my people are dying at the hands of white supremacy and I'm out here studying birds. And I feel guilty for even engaging in something as disconnected as studying nest predation in seaside sparrows. I have this feeling that this is not what a black person should be doing right now, that I need to be on the front lines of social justice. Oh, and yeah, that just really struck me. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's such a contrast to like what she's doing now with, mm -hmm. and I, I just, I hope that she doesn't feel guilty that she's just studying right. birds. Exactly. You know, yes. Because it's important. It's important to study birds. And then she's also doing this other thing with, with getting her peers to feel comfortable in nature and for yeah. everyone to feel comfortable in nature. Yeah. Um, being so, a role model. Yeah. yeah. Being a role model, creating a space. Yeah. Exactly. So that is a little bit about Kareen, but I also wanted to mention some of the other absolutely super, super, super power gals that um, helped create Black Birders. Sweet. One is Anna Gifty Opoku Agaman, and her socials are, it's Afronomics. She's an economist. Oh. Um, but she's part um, And so when she when they started the social media push, she started pushing too, even though she's not a birder at all. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, she thought it was interesting. She also is the CEO of the Sadie Collective, which is a group that um, supports Black women in economics and finance. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Is it supporting small businesses, that sort of, that idea or well, not so much? More, uh, it's more supporting women that want to go into economics. Oh, or, as a career. Finance, yes. Like, nice. Like supporting them because, you know, there really aren't any, they don't yeah. really have a lot of peers. Yeah. Um, and then I also want to mention Erin McGee. 
and her um, socials are Afro Herper. She's nice. a herpetologist. She studies reptiles and um, she does a weekly um, hashtag find that lizard on Instagram and Twitter, oh. <laughs> which is so cool. Um, she takes pictures and also um, her colleagues take pictures and she, they post them. And it's literally a picture of like some leaves in a pile. <laughs> And I, I don't think I've ever successfully found that lizard. Like, <laughs> they are very... So it's harder than where's Waldo then? <laughs> yes. But so she's, and she's an excellent role model as well. Um, she's, Perfect. and she's just delightful. Um, also Danielle Bellany, um, hers is Bells is Birding is her hashtags on socials. Oh. Um, and her story, she was actually had the police called on her um when she was working for the park service she was setting up traps for um to catch bobcats for tag for tagging and study and um the police said that they received multiple calls she that, works there that somebody was walking in the forest who works there <laughs> <laughs> yes, like what? Well, like I mean, she was probably wearing like a ranger outfit. I mean, I don't know. I mean, so, right? <laughs> but right. yeah, yeah. And she said that was right after Trayvon Martin had been murdered, oh. and she was just out there doing her job, and yeah. people were calling her because she was literally walking in the forest, existing, doing her job. Yeah. Yes. Um, wow. Yeah. And also, um, Chelsea Carnahan. She's another herpetologist that um, supports Black Birders Week and Black Women in Science. Um, she's in Dominica. She studies anole lizards and she posts a weekly, did you anole? <laughs> <laughs> With lizard facts. Cute. <laughs> yes. Um, also Deja Perkins, um, she's naturally wild on her socials. Mm -hmm. She's uh, an urban ecologist. And her big thing is promoting nature activities, even in the middle of the city, mm -hmm. because um, studying urban wildlife and how they're adjusting is super important. And there aren't yeah. very many people doing it. So if she can involve kids and other people in urban environments to start logging, um, you know, sightings and things, it really helps with different scientists. Yeah. Um, because we're becoming more and more of a concrete jungle. Exactly. And so observing it from different uh, different areas of what is nature doing in those concrete jungles. Yeah. Yeah. And just, I mean, the birds don't know. Um, mm -hmm. There was an amateur birder who tweeted during um, Birders Week. And she's like, the birds don't know it's the projects. Right. I exactly. mean, they're, they're, there's a tree and they're sitting in it. And yeah. so... Yeah, so it's just really interesting. It made me think of of Kareen Newsom and her. I didn't know what a blue jay was. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Until I saw a picture of one, and then she saw them everywhere. Um, I'm very much uh, uh, Gina Davis has a saying that she used for uh, for the her gender studies, which is if she can see it, she can be it. Yeah. And this is very much that kind of a situation where it's something as simple as a blue jay of this is what it's called and this is what it looks like. And now all of a sudden the world is new because you can see it and you can interact with it. You know what that yeah. is now. It's the whole world opens up that way. Yeah, the, something that was in the background. Yeah. And then my last superstar <laughs> yes. is a room map. Uh, she is the founder and CEO of Outdoor Afro. Nice. Outdoor Afro is a national non-profit organization. And basically it's to promote um, uh, African-Americans in nature. Mm -hmm. And they have meetups. So you can look on Outdoor Afro and put in like your zip code um, and see, you know, can I meet people up in the park? Are there people birding? Are there people, you know, kayaking? Are there people, yeah. you know, mountain climbing or whatever? Um, and she actually, her, it started as just her blog. Oh, and gotcha. And it's turned into this huge thing. Um, she's on the California State Parks Commission. She is a National Geographic Fellow. Ooh. Yes. Um, Oprah 
of course, has highlight highlighted her on her show and in her magazine. Nice. And yes, and she was part of Oprah's 2020 Vision Tour. Oh, cool. And when I was first reading about like Outdoor Afro, I was thinking, well, you know, why don't why don't you just join your parks department or whatever? You know, why don't you just right. join a birding group and then you don't realize how hard it is yeah exactly how this is needed you know yeah. that i need a space where i'm comfortable mm -hmm. to start sort of you know maybe i've always wanted to kayak and i'm too afraid right exactly so i that just really opened my eyes so i did want to mention her too yeah <laughs> so oh I, I dig it and i could go on and on and on because <laughs> um when my son he got a lizard for christmas oh and I've, we've never had a reptile pet before. We mm -hmm. only had fur, fur babies. And so I went a little overboard and we watched like tons and tons of YouTube videos <laughs> of lizards. <laughs> and there is a whole huge black herping community. Oh, nice. That I had no idea of. But um, so that was really interesting. And that sort of, I started looking at all of the different, like, you know, the Afro herper and the, the whole community. And then that kind of led me back around to, to black birders. Yeah. We all supporting that because they're all, they're all in the group chat. <laughs> right. I know exactly. Power in the group chat. Look at that. <laughs> I know. I know. So I don't know. I just thought the whole thing was really interesting. And yes. It really highlights a lot of, um, of, you know, young people. And a lot of these people are students and graduate students and undergrad and just the work that they're doing in nature and also in just lifting each other up. Right, exactly, yes. And taking up space, saying, yeah. you know, using the hashtag um, uh, to show how many there are in numbers and that you're not alone in yeah. something that excites you, that gives you passion, that gets you exploring this amazing universe that we're in. So I think that's great. And I, especially with something like, you know, COVID, <laughs> um, you know, getting together in a group right now is terrifying for different reasons, yes. but having the hashtag to know that in the future, you know what I mean? There's the opportunity to get together in a group or just that, you know, you see a cool bird, you snap a picture, you know, that there's a hashtag that people can find it and like it as much as you do. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, I don't know if, if you do use Twitter or Instagram, um, definitely check out some of the hashtags because a lot of the posts are just like so just entertaining, just pure <laughs> entertaining. I mean, so much of what scientists do, they're all trying, scientists everywhere, I think, are all trying to like make their disciplines look interesting and cool yes <laughs> they're because always trying like weird stuff like why not lizard <laughs> <laughs> i think because they're so excited about discovery that's the one commonality that i see across um different disciplines is the the positivity and the boost you get from discovery you want to share that and you want to get people excited about it. And you do have that, oh, I'm just a nerd. Nobody's going to care about my discovery. So I'm going to use a cool pun or, yeah. you know, a neat game and get people as excited, you know, and surprise, surprise, a lot of people are really super geeky and love discovery as well. So <laughs> yeah. And just the, the scientists sort of chatting among themselves, it's gone from these closed group chats to where mm -hmm. it's open on Twitter. Everyone can see it. Yeah. So if you do have a weird interest, or even if you're just scrolling by and catch it for whatever mm -hmm. reason, it shows up in your algorithm, you know, you might get interested in some weird thing. Yeah. And it's just, I don't Go know. Go down the rabbit hole. It's Explore. Cool learn. Social media, despite all of the horrible drawbacks, like mm -hmm. occasionally in the doom scroll, you find like, find that lizard and... <laughs> Yes, exactly. Your you find that changed. lizard in a pile of leaves, and you're like, I have one today. <laughs> That's what they oh, look like. Oh, yeah. Bobby's got the it. lizards. Oh my I god! Told you, it's a pile of leaves, but there's ten of gnolls in there. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, I'm batting a thousand on that, but <laughs> I love the idea of it, though. <laughs> Bonnie's like, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna be up till one in the morning, but I'm gonna get it. <laughs> get one of them. <laughs> You're weekly. <laughs> Oh, wow. You get a week. You probably need a week <laughs> to try to find all of them. <laughs> now imagine that's your job. 
Oh, that'd be fun. <laughs> That's your whole job. Oh. I need to count all of the lizards in this square. Right? Exactly. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> That's why we need all kinds of folks that love nature and discovery and adventure and making cool games for us. <laughs> yes. If you see anyone out in the wild, um, you know, it's okay to have a healthy suspicion. But right. If somebody is obviously like just with looking a for birds or insects. Or... <laughs> exactly. Right. Or just existing. <laughs> existing in nature. Right. Just taking a day, you know? <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> Oh, fun. Do you know, I don't know when, uh, when Blackbirders week is, do you know when it is? It's in June. I don't okay. know exactly when for 2021. Gotcha. I can, and I can show notes and all that kind of good stuff and totally look it up for this particular year, but yes, June-ish. I, okay. I am unsure, but, um, honestly, the hashtag is, is all the time. Yeah, 52 yeah. weeks a year. Yes, but exactly. Every week <laughs> is, is Blackbirding Week, yes. Yes, and um, Black <laughs> AF and Science and Black AF and STEM are yes. uh, also very, very active. Um, Perfect. Yes, and a lot of these people, after they sort of raised all this awareness, have now gotten jobs. So nice. some of the founders, one of the founders does nature for PBS. She's on YouTube all the time, Deja. Oh. And... Um, uh, some of the, um, one of the men, male founders of Blackbirders Week now hosts um, Audubon shows. So yeah, oh, yeah, it really, that is <laughs> it awesome. A lot of people up and it got, it got a lot of support and attention from, you know, big science organizations. Good. Where, we know you're there. We're sorry. We don't, you know, we're sorry <laughs> if you thought, if you thought we didn't know you were there. <laughs> right. Exactly. Let's remedy this. Let's, you know what I mean? Yeah. Let, let's grow and expand together and learn new things. Yeah. Exactly. I think that's great. <laughs> Katie or Bonnie, did you have any questions for Amy? No, jellyfish wants some love though jellyfish is like i'll help you with those birds <laughs> Jelly's a birder. i think so yep <laughs> she wants to watch the birds too <laughs> always <laughs> exactly there's does uh jellyfish because my cats do that little i don't even know how to do it that oh. ar, 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 thing yeah when they see a bird yeah <laughs> They don't make that noise for anything else but birds. <laughs> They're the suspicious ones. Could be. I think it's they're so excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wraps it up for us this week. Join us next week as our next gal pal shares her one cool gal in STEM for Black History Month on the Gal's Guide podcast. Thanks for listening. Sweet. <laughs>